Hey gearheads, Steve here from Tech Support with our new PTZ camera control app. It's called BG Control, and you can find that on the support page under the download section on our website. We'll go ahead and include a, a link to that below in the video description. So uh, go ahead and uh, get your hands on it and let's figure out how we use this thing. So there's a couple important pieces of information you're going to need to make this work. The first of which is the serial number of your camera. The software works only with BZB gear cameras. It doesn't work with anyone else's. Uh, and it doesn't work without that serial number in there. So make sure you get that. You can find it on the bottom of the camera, on the barcode sticker, or on the sticker on the side of your box as well. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is the IP address of your camera. If you haven't already put your camera on your local network, uh, we'll go ahead and put some links above for a place for you to watch videos on how to do that. Make sure you get that done first, then come back to us and uh, we'll keep on going. So now that you've uh, done that, got your camera on the network, Let's go ahead and move forward. And uh, I've already got the software downloaded to my desktop here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. The first time you run it, you'll probably get uh, a firewall notification asking for you to allow communication with this app. Make sure you click allow, otherwise it won't work. It needs to talk over the network to pull the RTSP feed from your cameras for the video preview. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do once we get this thing opened up is go to settings, and we're gonna select cameras. From this page here, you notice our little plus. That's gonna let us add our camera, so we'll go ahead and click that, and this window pops up to add a new camera. The first thing it's asking for, lo and behold, is the serial number. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch in my serial number, and uh, make sure you double check that and get the, the right number in there, otherwise it's not gonna work. And for a title, I'm gonna call this one camera one. I need to put in my IP address. And then we'll put in our username and password. By default, these are both admin, all lowercase. If you've changed those, make sure it reflects in here. And then we click OK, and it'll take a minute while it searches for the camera on the network. Once it finds it, it will go ahead and add it to the interface here. And there it is. I'm gonna add one more camera here. And this one is going to need to be a different serial number. There's no, no cheating, guys. You gotta put in a serial number for each camera. For the title here, we're gonna put camera two, and then uh, go ahead and put in my IP address here. Oops, got the fat fingers going today, there we go. Username and password, click OK, and again, we need to wait a few seconds for it to populate. There it is. So uh, now that we got both of these cameras in there, oh, looks like I can't spell, can I? So we'll click this button right here, this button lets you edit your settings. So uh, you, if you put your serial number in wrong and it's not working, or if, like me, you can't spell, then you can go back in there and actually spell camera the way that it was intended to be. Click OK, and that will update. And there it is. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and close this window out, and you'll notice on the uh, main screen of our interface here, both of those cameras are now populated. We've got these little radio buttons next to them to activate them, so I'm gonna click the button for both. And what that does is bring up a little video preview. So this is gonna be a low resolution preview, uh, uses the RTSP substream. So if it doesn't come through crystal clear, don't be concerned, that's normal. That's not the actual output of your camera, that's just a substream used specifically for things like this, where it just takes a little bit less bandwidth not so uh, processor intensive on your computer to run the software. Uh, that's why we chose to go that route. So you'll notice we've got an image here. You can see Florante there behind that light. And uh, also you see him here a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and grab camera one here. You'll notice this control wheel. This is uh, similar in function to like the thumbstick on a video game controller. So if you just click in the center there and move your little cursor, that will give you your directional control. If you start in the center wheel there, it gives you the little more fine tuning. If you start on the outside, it gives you a little faster motion. So find what works for you. Get your setting in there. Once you get it kind of aimed where you want it, use the zoom keys here to zoom on in. And we will just uh, get a zoom in. Whoops, went a little, little, little too far there, a little too fast. So now we got the shot we want. We can go ahead and click the save button right here. It looks like a little disc. Some of you out there may not be familiar with what a disc is, but once upon a time, we use those to save information. So we're gonna do a little throwback here and save something on our disc. 
I'm going to title this one Handsome Fellow because, let's be honest, it's true. At least that's what mom tells me. Grandma too. She wouldn't lie. Once you get that stored in there, you can uh, position the camera a little bit differently. Let's grab the logo up here. I'm going to go ahead and save that one and we'll title this one Logo. Now you'll notice down below, we've got uh, our two presets stored in our bottom window of our interface. Now if I click over to camera two, you notice they disappear. So whichever camera you've got selected, the presets for it are going to show in the window down below. So now that I've got uh, camera two here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get some shot of 007 flow sneaking around here in the background. Got to watch out for that guy. And we'll uh, get a shot of this camera behind him in the box here. We'll store this one. Call that camera in box. Seems fairly descriptive. I'm going to click OK. And then just for fun, we'll get a nice shot of nothing on the wall. How about that? And we'll title this nothing on the wall. Don't need the extra caps there, Steve. All right, so we'll click OK, get that thing stored in there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on camera one, and over here I've got a home button, so that'll take it back to the home position. I'm going to do the same thing for camera two. And now you'll notice uh, we are back to the home position, and all I need to do is click the button for the preset. So if I click camera inbox, that camera's going to jump right over to there. If I go to camera one, click on handsome fellow, that thing's going to zoom right in, and hey, What's happening? <laughs> so uh, another important feature that uh, we should mention in here are the favorites. Notice next to each one of these presets, we've got a star icon. If I click that, obviously I'm my favorite. Could be a little bit arrogant, but what do you want? So now that will add that to my favorites list. I'm going to also add a favorite for camera two. Let's do nothing on the wall, because why not? Now, if I click the star button up top here in the interface, it will open up my favorites page. You will see the preview of each one of these presets up there with its title. And uh, that lets me access all of my favorite presets in one position, so, or in one place, I should say. So with this single window open, I can jump and control both of my cameras. Notice that one just jumped right over to the nothing on the wall. So. Let's uh, reactivate this camera in the box preset. And for this one, we'll go back to the logo. And again, I can jump over to my favorites here. And with a single click on the picture there, jumps right to our preset position. Uh, one other feature that there is is the preset speed slider. You'll see that right here. If I adjust this, this adjusts the speed at which the pan, tilt, and zoom functions move between each preset. So I'm going to set that thing kind of slow for both of them and then we will uh, change our preset again and in theory it will give us a nice slow transition and there it goes so you'll notice it just kind of does a nice slow creeping shot there if you want to make it high speed you can do that and then it just jumps right across so that pretty much sums up all the features in it. It's pretty simple. Again, it's designed just to give you an easy way to control your cameras, hop through all your presets. Maybe you don't have a joystick controller and you don't feel like logging into the web interface every time you want to adjust the camera. This makes it real easy for you to do it right over the network. And uh, we hope you enjoy it. Hope you make good use of it. If you have any questions, as always, we're available in tech support. We've got the knowledge base on the support page of our website as well. And we've got a whole bunch of videos on YouTube that are there to help you out. So uh, please make use of all those resources. We're happy to help you out and uh, we hope to hear from you. And uh, until next time, keep on streaming. Thanks.